Hello YouTube and welcome to a brand new Unity 3D Space tutorial. So we're going to carry on from last time and we're going to work on our hyperspace. We're going to add some more features to it, stop a couple of scripts to fly. Really simple just to finish it off. So what we did last time is, and before I carry on don't worry about that error, there's something we did on the line tutorial, we're going to fix it. Um, we're going to we press H and it will count down. Commencing launch sequence in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, hyperspace then initiated. However, nothing happens. It just sits there, and we can turn like that. So, we first need to make it actually shoot off, go straight forward. That's all we need. And then we also need to disable the mouse mode. Look, the firing, and um, the movement, the BOSD stuff like that. We need to disable them so then you're just fully going in hyperspace. And the only key what can get you out of it is pause. Game paused. Or H. Hyperspace aborted. But then we've also got the glitch of when we press H again. Commencing launch sequence in five. This does all four, this. Three, three, then the particles just fade straight out, which is not what we need. We need it to restart, which is simple to do as well. So, first thing we're going to do is fix this error. So you see we've got loads of errors because of the pause, so we're not working on them yet. We'll do them later. But that's just basically saying it can't find the character. And then 42 item stats, I already know where it is, so we don't need to go and look. It's simply because we need to increase the item stats amount from 7 to 8. 8. There we go. And then we press play, and it should. Cage. There we go. It's the cage what needed fixing. Easy enough. So that's that one fixed, and if we have a look at it, everything's all in check. So you can see it's all intact. So if we go back to Unity and we click refresh button on it, everything gets updated, it's all a-okay. So we're going to go and find our hyperspace script, which is not in there or there. Oh, Unity's glitched then. Um, it will be a missed script maybe. Hyperspace, there we are. So what we need to do is go to character and disable space fire, mouse look and space movement. Yeah, that seems good enough. Everything else can roughly be kept on. So really, really simple to do. So we're going to open up hyperspace. And in here, we're going to scroll down to where we need to put it. So the places we need to put it is these two if stem it's here. Or we could put them in these two here, whichever one you want. I'm actually going to put it in these two here because then it's just easier if we have a call on. I don't know. But then if we do do this, I don't know, it might work better. Hey, We could also adapt this to, say, like, disable things and just put a, a boolean with it. So if true, play the hyperspace sound, else don't play it at all, then it will automatically disable whatever we need. Very simple. So down here, um, where should we pour it? So it plays the sound, should it disable the things there? Or should it play it after it's played the sound? Hmm, I think I'm going to put it after. So you can still move, you've got time to aim, position yourself, and you've got time to abort if you need b needs be, and then you can just get out of there. Perfect. So here, we're going to type game object dot find I'm going to zoom in a little bit more for people who don't turn the quality up and we'll say character dot get component component uh, space movement dot enabled equals false so when it's so what else do we need mouse look false let's have a look what else do we need so we've got mouse look disabled space movement disabled space fire to be disabled then that should be it so we'll also say space fire and just to stop people glitching so if someone looks right at a door and presses it we don't want them going through we'd rather want them like passing straight through it so i'm going to turn level switching off as well so level switching because sometimes if you fire straight across the universe you may pass through a door maybe you don't want to so if we disable it you go straight through it, but if you want to actually get it, then you have to stop yourself before. Makes sense. So I'm going to copy those and paste them in here, and just turn everything to true. True, 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 true. And that should work perfectly. So what I'm going to do is also, when it's off, set particles to false, so they don't exist no more. So that should work really well. So we try it. When, as soon as the countdown ends, we won't be able to do anything. It'll just fire unless we press H. And that should work. 
We still need to make it propel forward. Commencing launch sequence in five. Space oh, initiated. And fire. We can't move. We can't fire. We can't. Wait. Can we fire? No, we can't do anything. We can't look around. We can't do anything. Perfect. That's what we need. So when we press H, hyperspace aborted. We get everything. Perfect. Really well. So what's next is to actually propel it forward. And what we actually do is rip the code straight from our space. Well, space movement. I'm not going to rip it straight from. I'm going to retype it for people who. Well, I don't know. I'm just going to retype it to show you. But I'm going to show you where we get it from in the space movement. So as you can see, it currently says all this stuff up here, which we already know. And it says if you press W, then it increases the ship's speed. But then there's nothing. It just simply increases it. So if we ju were to just put ship speed at 1, then it would just push it forward. But if we were to get ship speed and times it by 5 for hyperspace, then it would propel it forwards. So what we're going to do is rewrite all this bit here, and then literally turn the speed to ship speed times 5. That simple. So it's really, 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 really easy. So we're going to go back to hyperspace. And we're going to say, and in our function update here, because it's the loop one, we're going to type if hyperspace active is true, perfect, and just some brackets out, then what we need to do is push it forwards. So we first need to get the controller from our character, so var controller um, equals game object dot find, and we can copy all this from down here because we already know it all. So game object dot find character dot get component character controller that should work. But just to save any errors, we'll colon character controller just to save any errors. So then next, we need to actually push it forward. So as long as you've got pragma strict up here, it'll work. Otherwise, you have to try type transform dot forward. We're going to put forward equals, and we're going to change what the vector. 3 dot forward is so we're going to say transform with a lowercase t dot transform direction so we're changing what direction that is and we'll say vector 3 dot forward so it's a bit weird code lap but we know it works 100 percent and for the last one we're going to do the controller dot move here we're not going to use simple move because that's different that gives you no character gravity I think or it might be the other way simple move does agree for gravity I think but we're simply going to type that and then change the ship speed really really simple so it's controller which is accessing this variable dot move and then in brackets we put what we want so this dot game object transform dot forward and then we put our speed so it's times so what speed do we need first well, first we're going to go and have a look at our entity stats and see if we've already assigned the top speed because then we can just use that straight off of it. So top speed is 10, but if we go back to the top speed of space movement, it's 3. So something's wrong there. So we're going to change this top speed to 3, just like that. And we're going to go and link it directly to this. So we're going to type game object dot find misc scripts dot get component and entity stats dot player dot top speed um, and then we'll put times five perfect so that should pretty much propel him forwards as soon as we're done so I seem to got the pragma strict m mixed round it turns out if you have got pragma strict there it won't work and um, we could just get rid of it or we could just type transform like I said before transform that forward so I need to check whether top speed is actually a member of entity stats because I can't remember what we called it so we'll double click ship stats and we don't even have ship stats because it's entity stats no wrong way other way ship stats there we go and is it top speed top speed lowercase correct first ship should be three so it never updated itself but it should be fine so that'll load and then we can just try it so player is not a member of ship stats, so it's first ship. Uh, so we're just gonna say for now ships here. Ships bracket zero. We will eventually change that to an ID which tells you which ship the character's got, so you can determine which speed you've got and everything. 
but for now we're not going to because that's more um, stuff we've got to do. So I'm going to press, come on, we'll press H and I'll cut back to when it's near the countdown. Commencing launch. So, we got a little error there. It turns out we start projecting forwards before hyperspace was even on. So if we just look at it now, here, hopefully, we press it, you'll see that as soon as I press H, it'll start flying forwards. So if I press aim that way and press H. Commencing boom. launch sequence in five. We're four, moving forward. So three. we need to make it wait before it does it, else we won't get the actual thing. So if we go back to our hyperspace script and look where it's turning it on, it turns it on right here, which is not what we want. We want it to turn on after off has been called. So we're gonna go in and turn it like this. And then it'll only start speeding as soon as that function is being called. So we press H. Aim somewhere first. Commencing launch sequence in five, four, three. Hyperspace so aborted. We got there quicker. Hey, that's the thing. So we can come down and we'll see where it begins pushing it forwards. So on after it's called on, it comes down here. It reads all this. Let's try it like this. So we grab this and put it below here. So it must wait for the yield. Dot wait for seconds. Else we don't. Else it won't work. And then for this, it can just stop instantly. So hopefully that should work. If not, we might get an error again. Well, not an error, just more of a glitch. So let's try it. So we look around and press H. Commencing launch there we go. sequence it's not in five, a bit. So four, we'll position ourselves three, to go that two, way. one. Fire. Hyperspace initiated. Boom! As you can see, we can't move anywhere, but we are flying. And look how fast we are getting across the galaxy now. So hyperspace. So you press H. Hyperspace start. aborted. Perfect, and we can just move around again. So that's working really well. We obviously need to make it work um, better so it becomes slowly to a slowdown. But we could work on that later. So maybe instead of it going gameobject.find.ships times five, um, it decreases the variable so you slowly come to a stop as the particles begin to fade out. Then it disables it. So we'll have to see, but we need now need to work on the tint. So in order to make our particles actually fade out and then come back when we want them to instead of just staying away, we've actually got to have a look at this. So when we press play and we press H, Commencing launch down, sequence in five. then we pause it just because we are getting near the sun and I'm going to drag it all the way back so we don't die. Okay, not that one, wrong one. We're going to drag everything back so we don't die. But basically, the way it's, why it's doing it is on our hyperspace when we press H, um, it'll fade out because it'll turn the script on. So we press H. Hyperspace aborted. It'll fade out. Stop beeping. But then it'll never turn this fading destroy off, even after it ticks down. It'll just stay that. So we need to turn that back off. But what we also need to do is set the materials tint back to 100. So then it's, we can actually see it, and then it should work fine. So, on fading destroy, what we're going to do is here, where it sets it to false, we're actually going to set the colour of it to um, the thing here. Really simple. So we're going to grab colour, equals colour 32 here, and paste it here. Just like that. So after it does it, it resets it, and then we've got to assign it to the material like so. So nothing to do with the timer anymore. It'll set it, texture it. So that'll be completely set. And then all we're going to do down here is type this dot enabled equals false. So then it disables itself all in one script. So that should work really, really well. And before it only, I, it, we didn't see it because I glitched by moving hyperspace and not the character. But now it should work fine. So if we turn this way and press Commencing H, launch. so there's our hyperspace, we can't move, we press H, hyperspace it fades aborted. out. And then it's gone. So we press H again. Commencing launch sequence in five, tick four, up, and then three, two. So as you can see, we've got hyperspace back. Perfect. Press H again. Hyperspace aborted. It will forever do what it should. So it works really well. So that's all we're going to do for this tutorial. 15 minutes, bang on, hopefully. Should work really well. Everything's in the description for you. Thank you for watching, and I really, really hope you liked it. Any suggestions, comment below. I currently only have one suggestion for the space where I have like a million for the plan. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you for watching. Please join my Facebook group. Please hit the thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.